to keep the spirit up. Amen. Let's keep clapping our hands. Amen. We serve a mighty God in this place. Sing, these are the days. And these are the days of Elijah. Declare. Declare the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant. Righteousness be. And these are the days of great trial, of famine and darkness and sword. And we are the voice in the desert, crying, preparing the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and out of Zion still south. These are the days. The days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of a harvest, the fields are as wide in your world. And we are the labor of his Declaring the word of the Lord, saying, Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet's call, lift your voice, the hero to believe, and out of Zion to south, sing, Behold, Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds. Come on, church, sing it. The trumpet's call, it's your voice, it's the gear of Jubilee, and out of Zion still, one more time, sing, behold, behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet's call, lift your voice, it's the gear of Jubilee, and out of Zion still, south, amen, church, lift your voice in this place. Every hand lifted high as we sing this prayer. 
yes, I believe. that we could pray for today bring your own god wants to help you uh, by his spirit through his word in the this company here today there's a special blessing for you and i let's be open to receive all that god has for us when we subside i'm going to ask compton to seal our prayers let's, let's cry out to god together church father we praise you today we thank you and we come together as your assembly in this place and we need your grace and we need your favor god that you would help us and you know all of our needs and i pray that you would minister to each man each woman each child in this place bring blessing bring favor upon us we lift up lord god a rocker we pray for his healing a supernatural miracle a speedy recovery we pray for pastor ernest and and tay born we pray you help them in the building of the church there that there would be lasting fruit lord 
from that God outreach and we also pray for your will to be done and your help to Ray and Geordie and their family help them to see a speedy recovery Lord in their, in their house and Father we house. thank you Lord once again that you are the God that we serve Lord God Father you are omnipresent Father the same spirit that's here Lord God is there in St. Clair Father is there on where Ray and Geordie are Father God I pray that you'll comfort them Lord where they are Father but I pray Lord you'll bring revival Lord to the city Lord God revival Lord to this nation Father let every church be filled with disciples Lord God key people Father God, who are willing to do your word, will, Lord God, Father, I pray, Lord, that you're anointed to be upon this service, Lord God, Father, you anoint our pastor, our minister, Lord, as he preaches your word, Father God, give him the words, Father God, straight from the throne room, Lord God, Father, we're asking, Lord, for more of you, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to decrease, Lord, as you increase in our lives, Lord God, Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory and all God's people said. Amen, hallelujah. Tell two, three people around you, God's got something for them today, amen. <laughs> God's going to bless all of you. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. As we take our, uh, our seats today, I just want to say it's a great joy to see you here at the Potter's House Church in St. Mary's. It's always a great blessing to come together. Uh, the church is the assembly of God. We're the called out ones. We come from, you know, all different places and all, you know, some are traveling near, some are traveling far, but we come together as God's special assembly and he's here in the midst of us to help us and bless us. I'm really encouraged you're part of this assembly today. Um, and so uh, just uh, by way of announcement, remembering uh, every, uh, as well as this uh, regular Sunday morning service here at 10.30, we have our evening service at 6 p.m., uh, we do have prayer before that uh, evening service at 5 p.m. And uh, we also have the midweek top-up service at Wednesday night, 7.30 p.m. encourage you to come along. Lots of good things happening. Uh, men, please note the Kingdom's Men meeting tomorrow night. I've put it back a week just to give us a little bit of uh, um, a, a rest. We had that impromptu, that spontaneous revival. And I uh, wanted just to give people a bit of breathing space uh, and uh, so we'll set that back to the 27th. Uh, I also want to bring to your attention there is the impact team to Eagle Vale this coming Saturday. And so I've got a sign up list there with the details of that uh, event. And so if you can make that, if you can be part of that, just please list your, write your name down there for me neatly so I can understand it. Uh, don't put bro or cars or, or, or whatever. I, I need to know who it is. And so you write your name and write the time you're also expecting to go. If you can't be there from the beginning, write when you will be there, just so I can pass that on to Pastor Adrian and he can organise the troops and organise food. It's just a courtesy thing we do to help each other be organised. So please uh, make note of that um, sign-up list and I encourage as many of you that can be there to be there. Be a support and a blessing. As we bless others, God blesses us. Right? There's something. As we give the principle of life, as we give of ourselves in whatever capacity, God sees that he will look after us. And uh, uh, there's that saying, you sow over here and then you reap over here. You know, So uh, we might be outreaching over there, but God will be faithful to help over here. Yes, Joe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Fantastic. Yes. And so, yeah, that's that's what happened yesterday. Fantastic. Oh, you got they got saved this morning or yes? Oh, this morning. Fantastic. Awesome. And so there you go. God is on the move. There's, uh, God is doing things and uh, this is all in our area. The fields are white, ready to go. I encourage you to be outreaching, telling people about Jesus. Uh, but let's um, uh, just keep in mind that Eagle Vale. Uh, outreach there that'll be a blessing to pastor adrian and uh tash and the saints there in eagle vale um the other thing made i uh, just remind those who are going on the youth boot camp i just want to uh, those of you that are going the youth please if you haven't filled out the registration forms and given to me make sure that you do bring them in uh and the other thing is be conscious of the at some stage we're going to have to pay the money for that we can do some fundraising activities for it. We can uh, 
Uh, if you have any ideas where we can do some fundraising things just to help the youth bring down the cost some, uh, we can put things on here. We can put a Bunnings fundraiser, sausage sizzle fundraiser. We can do that and, uh, and we can uh, help them and their families uh, lower the costs of that. But those things are due. Uh, and as soon as you can um, uh, fill out those forms, bring the money, that will be a blessing. But we can also subsidise those costs along the way uh, to help. So um, that's that. Uh, the July calendar will be out very soon. I have uh, got it and I just need to post it for you all to know what's coming up. Next month we have a very exciting month uh, where we're going to have a campaign of um, six, seven testimonies uh, of different people coming, giving their story, how Jesus changed their lives, or, you know, how they were before, what, how, God, how they got saved uh, and, what, and uh, how, how God has blessed them since. So we're going to be advertising that and we're going to uh, put that forward um, and believe God for more lives being changed through that campaign. So uh, lots of good things. We do have things planned on the calendar. We're expecting God's favour. I really believe this year, and even though I'm speaking from the middle of the year, this year ahead, we're in for some exciting times and uh, we're, we just uh, want to give God something to work with. And as we do, he'll bless that. Hallelujah. Right now, we're going to move on. I'm going to ask the ushers to come. As they come, let's give God some hearty praise today. Father, we praise you. We worship you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Hallelujah. You might have the book of Haggai. Uh, and uh, it's a very short book in the Old Testament. Um, and in our Bible hour this morning, you know, the leader of our Aussie fellowship, Pastor Daryl Elliott was using this book as his text and just talking about God's will involves the timing. Uh, but he, he used this book and in the book of Haggai, God, he's addressing um, the people of God who had begun a good thing. They, they were God's people. They had, God had started something in them and through them. Uh, but along the way, they kind of lost their way. And, uh, and what was happening is that uh, they were looking to things of this world and their own lives and not prioritizing the kingdom of God. And because they weren't prioritizing God's will first, what was happening is in a, from a financial perspective, they were putting their, their, their resources in pockets and there were holes in their pockets. And uh, in other situations, uh, God, God said that you brought in much, but I blew it away. Uh, and it was because of this, their priorities were out of whack. And they may have had many uh, reasons uh, why their priorities were out of whack, but the, the bottom line of it was they were not seeking first the kingdom of God. And uh, he, he uh, called on them to actually attend to the house of God and, uh, and so in the book of Haggai, uh, he, he begins to call them to rebuild. And uh, you know what, I, I, I'm not going to read um, uh, the, the book here, but I'll leave you to read the book and the, the whole story of it. But when they turn their attention to prioritizing the kingdom of God and said, okay, we're going to see the kingdom of God first, the promise to them was, from this day I will bless you. And that's the issue here is when we prioritize God's kingdom from the moment we set our hearts to do that, there is a releasing of favor upon our lives. And financially, we can show that God's kingdom is a priority when we take the first fruits of what God blesses us with, whether it's week by week or a month by month, fortnight by fortnight, year by year. However, God brings the increase when we say, God, the first fruits belong to you before the government touches it, before the family gets their hands on it, before our mates get their hands on it, whatever it is, before we throw it to this hobby and that hobby, when we say, God, you get the first portion, that first 10%, that's what the Bible says, I give it to you, we make the bold statement that you come first and the promise is, from this day I will bless you. 
Amen. That is the attitude that brings the blessing of God. And every time we take an offering, we have that opportunity to do that. We can uh, obviously make our gifts by cash. We can give it by direct deposit. I know whenever we speak about money in the church, it can come across as a bit mercenary. But the reality is that we need it to operate. And God uses it to advance his will in the earth. And we do it for earthly business. We do it for kingdom business. The difference is when we do it for God's, God's will, what it does is, is, you know where it ends up? It ends up in the salvation of souls, people's lives being changed. That's where the investment goes towards the house of God, the work of God, and the fruit which are people like you and me, lives changed, sitting in church in their right mind headed for heaven that's glorious that's what god wants to accomplish today and i want to encourage you you're involved in a good work honor god don't put money in pockets with holes in it because of a, a, a wrong set of priorities begin to prioritize the kingdom of god take charge some of us oh i can't oh because of it we make excuses no 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 listen god has entrusted you with resources and he's calling on you to not make excuses or try uh, this no 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 take ch take dominion in this area and watch what god will do he will bless you okay he will bless you i'm going to ask joe to pray over the gift and giver yes turn to the book of Ruth today. We're going to look at chapter 1 and read a few verses there. Ruth chapter 1. Every now, <coughs> excuse me, every now and then I get to thinking about uh, my father and uh, he, he passed away over 13 years ago now. But uh, my dad wasn't the sort of guy that would sit me down and say, okay, Thea, I'm going to teach you something. Listen up. And, you know, he wasn't that kind of guy. But he would teach me through his actions. And uh, he actually taught me a lot through his actions. And he taught me about integrity. And he taught me about what it means to work. And he taught me that, you know, we don't complain, but we just get on with it and we be grateful for, for what we have and, and, and what we can do. And, uh, and so there was a certain determination about my father's life and he was always up early and he was off to work and uh, he wasn't one to be sleeping around. Uh, but he was always the first one up at the crack of dawn and uh, even when he was retired and because of uh, he had issues with his heart and he had to retire early or go on light duties first and, and then on. But he was still up and being productive and, and doing something productive with his day and life was never about him. It was always about I need to provide for my wife, I need to provide for my family and uh, he did so for us. He really did uh, give us an advantage uh, and a, a great 
uh, help in life by the way he worked and served. And he didn't have any toys. Uh, His spare time was either uh, sleeping in his chair uh, when he would have a little break uh, or maybe watching a cowboy movie or some tennis. He liked the tennis and every now and then he was able to do a bit of fishing. Now, here he was, a picture of hard work and dedication and living for, for the blessing of uh, his wife and for his family. In contrast, I heard about a roof plumber recently. He was doing a job the other day that his fourth-year apprentice and uh, a labourer were meant to be doing, but they just failed to turn up. And so this plumber had to go in and do, do the work of others. And he said... My fourth year apprentice has had 75 sick days in less than four years and I've never actually seen him sick, right? And so here's a, here's a, a serious contrast of a, a man who's dedicated and giving himself, never has a sick day, day in, day out, getting up, working for his family and here we see 75 sick days in four years and not even turning up for a job. Uh, this, the, there's something wrong there. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a problem. And if there are two attributes seriously lacking in our current generation, they would be, number one, initiative. This is where we're to get things started, right? So there's a lack in initiative. And secondly, there's a lack of determination getting things finished. Initiative is about getting things started. Determination is about finishing those things that you started. And both of these qualities are actually an issue in our current generation, in the world that we live in. And when it comes to seeing God's kingdom come and His will being done, we see both of these things evident in this young lady called Ruth that we're going to read about in our text. We're going to read from verse 16 through to 18. I really believe God's going to help us. And my sermon is entitled today, Are You Determined? Okay, Ruth chapter 1, verse 16. But Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if anything but death parts you and me. Verse 18, when she saw that she was determined to go with her, she stopped speaking to her. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. And my God, I'm asking that you would help us to not only have initiative to get things started every day for our whole lives, but that we would be a people determined to finish what we have begun in you. And I pray this for all of us here today in Jesus' name. God's people said, Amen. Hallelujah. So in this first point, we see that this girl, Ruth, this young lady, she actually possessed some metal. She actually possessed some backbone in her, she had a, a, a backbone of steel. She had a spine, hallelujah. The Bible says in our text, but Ruth, right? In uh, verse 14, the Bible says that, but Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. And here's Naomi trying to reason. If you know the story of Ruth, uh, uh, Naomi and her husband, Uh, Elimelech and her two sons Marlon and Chilion they've gone to to Moab to have a better life which is another sermon in itself they've left the people of God gone on an adventure that wasn't blessed by God in the course of that Elimelech dies and the two sons they actually marry and they die too and within 10 years this, this widow Naomi she's there She's, she's lost her husband, her two boys. She has these two uh, um, daughter-in-laws there and she's decided I'm going back to, to where I came from. I'm going back to the people of God where I came from. And here she's saying her bye-byes to Orpah. She's one of the daughters-in-law and Ruth, who's the other daughter-in-law. Uh, Orpah basically uh, kisses her and says, see you, Ma, thanks for the time. 
thanks for what you've done, kisses her and goes. But the Bible says, here's Ruth. She says that Ruth clung to her. Verse 4, don't ask me to leave you or turn you back, one translation said. You're going and I'm coming with you. I'm I'm clinging with you. And so when you, you read and to understand that word cling or clung, right, in the Hebrew it means to catch by pursuit and not let go. In other words, you, you ha- you've pursued someone and it takes initiative to pursue someone. If you've ever played the game Chasings, you can't just expect that you're going to catch someone just by standing there. <laughs> I'm going to get you doesn't work like that right but when we play chasings it's like you you're looking for the opportunity so you're going to make a dart you're going to run you're going to run hard uh, and you're going to do your best to catch someone and when you catch them you're going to cling to them for all your worth i got you and i'm not letting you go <laughs> right that's how that's how this is the picture of cling uh, it's the same word when we read in Genesis 2.24, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave or cling to his wife. Right? When you get married, it's like, bye-bye, ma and pa. I love you still, but I'm not clinging to you anymore. I'm clinging to my wife. She now becomes my priority. Amen. Amen. That's how it works. Right? And there's, there's, th- this is the idea. I'm going to cling I'm going to cleave to my wife, and uh, it's the same picture as Ruth clinging to Naomi and saying, you're going, but I'm coming with you. I'm not letting go. I'm coming. My sister may have turned around, but that's not affecting me. I know what I want, and I'm coming with you back to your people, and I'm going to be serving your God. Uh, This was her attitude. To chase someone down takes initiative, but then to not let them go takes determination, right? You can do the hard work. Oh, yeah, I've caught someone, but that's really just the beginning. If you want to cling to them, you have to be very, very determined to say, I'm not letting go. There's lots of people that start things, but far less see things through to the end. And this is the truth of life. Many starters, but few finishers. Paul was a man who possessed real determination in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. He says this, do you, do you not know that those who run in a race all run, but one receives the prize? Run in such a way that you may obtain it. And everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. That means self-control. There's a self-control about their lives there. Now, they do it to obtain a perishable crown, but we for an imperishable crown. Therefore, I run like this, not with uncertainty, like this I fight, not as one who beats the air. In other words, I'm not shadow boxing here, but I discipline my body and bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should be disqualified and so this is a, an incredible statement of determination by the apostle paul because i'm not just you know i didn't just i'm not taking this christian life lightly and the call of god lightly he says he's not beating the air with uncertainty right just oh yeah i'll have a go no 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 this is this is about i discipline my body i i i'm i'm, I'm determined I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to lose in this race that God has called me in. I'm not going to let my flesh get the better of me here. I'm determined to overcome and therefore I'm disciplining my body because I want to finish the race that God has for me. I don't want to get disqualified. He's determined. There's, there's, a, uh, there's this truth that you'll never keep the faith. You'll never finish the race without this grit of determination. You've got to have determination in you. Giving in will get you nowhere. You know, we have the book of Ruth, but we don't have the book of Orpah. Orpah was a sister. She was the one that gave the kiss. See you, Ma. Love you. And off she went. There's no book of Orpah. There's no ongoing reference 
to her life. There's no statement that says this woman was a woman of faith. But we have the book of Ruth. And the difference is she clung to her. She clung to Naomi. Verse 14, Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung tightly to Naomi. Naomi. And so Orpah went back to idolatry. Ruth is in the lineage of Jesus Christ. She uh, is in that wonderful line that led to uh, Joseph and Mary and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the difference when it comes to destiny and, and destination and result. It's, it's whether you have determination. Remember, Jesus, uh, Judas kissed Jesus goodbye. With a kiss, he betrayed him. Uh, he gives, uh, love you, Jesus, but he betrayed him and went in another direction. And Jesus, on the other hand, had to tell Mary to stop clinging to him. Right? So he's Mary. She's, she, she's a survivor. She made it to the end. She's a woman of faith. She clung. She was determined to cling. In the, in the Greek, touched, to attach oneself. Mark 5.28 says, For she said, If only I may touch his clothes. It's the same word for cling used in the Greek. If only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She's not just, oh, I've got to touch. She's clinging to the hem of Jesus' garment. Lots of folk were in that press as she pressed in to believe God for that miracle of healing. Lots of people. But this woman is the epitome of determination and she broke through. She not only touched, she clung to the hem of Jesus' garment and Jesus' response was, I felt power come from me. I felt power. Who was it that touched me? Who was it that was clinging to me? And there's this blessing that comes to those that will cling to Jesus Christ and his will for their life. When it comes to faith and believing for a miracle, are we quick to kiss things goodbye or will we press in? And this is the difference between destiny or ruin many times. It's Either we're just given a kiss, yeah, I've got some affection, but I'm going in the other way. Or, no, I'm clinging and I'm not letting go. The Bible says in Genesis 32 about a story of Jacob wrestling with the angel of the Lord, that he wrestled with God that day. He was desperate for change. Remember who Jacob was. He was a schemer. He was a rip-off. He was a, 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 a con man. A, and uh, his character was very, very evidently flawed. And we see the scripture record of so many instances of his scamming ways and some big, big scams that he did. He was a, a deceiver. But in him clinging to God and saying, I will not let you go until you bless me, he was transformed from the scammer into a prince with God, someone who had power with God and influence with God and uh, became one of the great patriarchs uh, of uh, the, the, the Hebrews and of the Christian faith. He was someone who clung to God. I will not let you go unless you bless me. This was no kiss from Jacob. This was a determined, I'm not going anywhere, God. You've got me <laughs> and... Uh, I'm attached to you from here on. You know, hanging on might hurt a little and it can be painful carrying your cross. Absolutely. I want to tell you a story about a man called Henry Dempsey. He was a commuter pilot who was sucked part way out of his plane and clung to the craft's outside staircase until the co-pilot made an emergency landing. The Eastern Express pilot, Henry Dempsey, 45 of Cape Elizabeth, suffered only cuts and bruises and was treated at a hospital and released, said St Stephen Mason, sales manager for the airline. The accident during a flight from Lewiston to Boston, the aircraft was about five miles outside the airport, several thousand feet in the air when Dempsey noticed a passenger door ajar. Dempsey was trying to close the door when he apparently was sucked out of the open hatch, authorities said, the co-pilot of the plane asked for permission to make an emergency landing, believing his partner had plunged to his death 
An emergency crew that met the plane when it landed found Dempsey clinging to the aircraft's outside stairs and the pilot had to be pried off. Dempsey had held on to the outside of the plane for about 10 minutes, the controller said. One federal official uh, uh, said that Dempsey probably did not have trouble breathing while outside because of its res relatively low altitude, but he expressed the surprise the pilot had survived. I would think it would be impossible to hold on to at that speed. It would take iron nerves and strong muscles, the official said. Whatever it was, this pilot this commuter pilot didn't let go. <laughs> he clung on so hard that they had to pry his fingers off that plane, but he made it. You know, and, and living for God, sometimes it's going to come down to that, where it's, it's not so much your mind. Your mind can be all over the place, <laughs> But it's that, that determination that says, I'm going to hang on. I know I'm on the right plane. I know this plane is taking me to the right destination. It's going to get me to heaven. I know I'm with the right group of people. I know that this is the assembly of God and the will of God for my life is connected to this, this place and this group of people and I'm not letting go. I don't care how long it takes. And, uh, and so that's the kind of determination we're talking about and uh, that's, that's determination. And it takes determination, secondly, to finish the race. Life can be tough. Some of you are thinking it's always tough. <laughs> I can't remember it not being tough, right? But life can be tough. Jesus never said life will be easy. In fact, he said the contrary will be your reality. He said in Luke 14 from verse 25, now great multitudes went with him and he turned and said to them, if anyone comes to me and does not aid his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. But which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to make war against another king? Does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000 or else while the other is still a great way off he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace so likewise whoever whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple and this is exemplified through the life of Ruth she was willing to leave all her familiar her 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 earthly family friends, the life that she had known there in Moab. She, she was willing to let that all go to follow a woman of faith. And let me just say, this woman of faith wasn't in her shining moments either, but she knew the God of heaven. And Ruth was willing to say no to all of that that she knew and cling to the right woman, to the right people who serve the right God the true God. Listen here, some words of determination. Philippians chapter 3, 12 to 14. Paul saying, Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And here's Paul again saying, I'm moving forwards. I'm not, there's stuff behind me, good and bad. I'm not looking at that. I keep, I'm determined. I'm, I haven't arrived. We haven't arrived, church. Heaven is before us. The will of God is before us. And we've got to keep pressing for that. Not getting bogged down in the past 
the good and the bad and the ugly, whatever it is, we've got to be pressing forward like Paul. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. We're looking unto Jesus. That's who we cling to. That's who we're reaching for. Clinging to him for all our life. Luke 9.62, But Jesus said to him, No one having put his hand to the plough and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. You can't be looking behind you when it comes to wanting to live for God. You've got to be looking straight ahead. You've started something. God started something in you. You've got to be looking ahead to Him and for His will. Second Thessalonians 3.13 But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Do not grow weary in doing good. It's written there because that's exactly what happens to us. We get tired we want to just release the pressure valve, let go. But God says, no, 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 you need to cling. Look at these examples that we have of people who clung, beginning with Ruth here today. She clung to Naomi, and in doing so, she was clinging to God Almighty and His will for her life. I want to close with an example of a man who made it here. And this is the story of Hugh Latimer, and he was an old-time saint. We're going back to 14, he lived between 1485 and 1555, and Hugh Latimer was involved in the Protestant Reformation in England. He studied at Cambridge University. He was named the chaplain of King Henry VIII, and uh, Hugh Latimer refused to sign the King's six articles because he saw them as a return of England back to Catholicism. See, they'd broken away from Catholicism, that Roman Catholicism, because there was so much false doctrine in it. And so <laughs> that's where the Church of England came out of. And here Hugh Latimer made a stand against the very king who employed him, the very king who we, King Henry VIII, uh, he had about uh, eight or nine wives, I believe, and he, 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 he got tired of them, chopped their heads off and got another one. Right? He had no problems getting rid of people he didn't want around him, but Hugh Latimer says, King, you're wrong. This is not right what we're doing here. This is not right the direction you want to take England. He, he was referred to as the most honest man in England, determined, uncompromising. And as a result, because he made that stand, the king put him in confinement in the Tower of London. And then... King Henry VIII, he actually died, he passed away. Edward VI followed. He was still confined in the tower. And then Edward VI was, was replaced with Mary I, who was a devoted Catholic. And then she finds out, why is, it, why is, is this guy Hugh Latimer in the tower? It's because he, doesn't, he didn't agree with uh, King Henry VIII's stand. But she's a Catholic. And so Hugh Latimer determined in his faith not recanting, because Mary was pressing him, you need to believe what, what I believe, upgraded him from confinement to prisoner. Right? So he, he, things got worse for him because he wouldn't recant. He remained determined. He, with 300 other Protestant leaders, were then burnt at the stake because they were determined, we're not letting go of our faith. We're not letting go. I could be privileged. I could live in posh circles here. I could attend to the queen. I could have a very comfortable life. But for these people, they said, no, no, no. My faith in God, my, my, my determination to do the will of God and to live the way of righteousness and truth, to honor my Lord Jesus Christ is better and more important to me than having anything this world offers. He was willing to lay down his life for Jesus Christ. He and many other men, many other faithful martyrs 
And uh, I want you to think he determined to be faithful to God and his word. His personal com conversion being based in the text. This was Hugh Latimer, 1 Timothy 1.15. This is, uh, uh, the, his, was his key text and that he lived by. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Hugh Latimer understood that, was devoted to Jesus Christ right to the end and he would not follow the multitude, the popular. Uh, and uh, there's a quote that says, the multitude is a fickle master, right? The multitude are always chopping and changing, switching their opinions. They're a fickle master. An observer said of this determined saint, his conscience is still his only monitor, his tongue is still free, and his soul is not for sale. That was Hugh, Lam Hugh Latimer, folks. It's determined souls like Hugh Latimer that leave a real legacy, and God help us should Jesus tarry, that we would be people of the same ilk, a determined people, a people like Ruth, not like Orpah, not like those who begin and after a, a few months, a few years. Right? Our life's but a vapour. Even if you got the whole 70, it's only a few years. Even if you got 100, it's only a few years. You could live 80 years and at the end if you would deny Jesus, it's like, what? You weren't determined enough. You weren't determined. God says to cling, cling, not let go. You've got to have the initiative. we here today. We have initiative. We're here in church. There's a start in our lives. God started something. You're flowing with him. You've shown it. You're chasing him. The fact that you're here, right? But you're going to have to have, couple that with your determination to say, well, I'm going to be here as long as Jesus gives me years. I'm going to be pursuing the will of God. I will not let go. I will press forward. I'm not going to get caught in the looking behind me and falling for that trap. I press ahead. I'm reaching for what Jesus Christ has for me. That's you and me, folks. That's you and me. And we'll do that. We're going to see the good things that Ruth later saw in her life and Naomi later saw. They saw wonderful blessings come their way. And it was because of someone who said, I'm going to cling to the right person. I'm going to cling to Jesus and the people of God. I want you to bow your heads this morning as we close in a word of prayer. Very simple message today. But thank God for simple. I like simple. Hallelujah. I like easy to understand truths, things that I can take with me, things that I can live. And here this morning, I want to bring... Uh, Firstly, a challenge and an invitation. The invitation is to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Saviour. You have an opportunity for God to begin a good work in your life. You have an opportunity today to reach out and cling to Jesus. And maybe here you're not saved, you're not right with God, but you want to be right with God. Perhaps at one point, you were clinging to him, but you let go. And in your heart, God's convicting you about clinging again to him. This call is also for you. Maybe you need Jesus today. Maybe you want to reach out and lay hold of him again with your life and bring a fresh commitment to him. Lord, I'm giving you my life. I'm surrendering to you. And if that's you, you'd put your hand up. Put your hand up today where you are. I'll see it. We'll pray with you before you go. Amen. God loves you so much. It's his desire to bless you. But he's a gentleman. He's not going to force you. He invites you. And if you're willing, he will help you and he will bless you. Will you reach out and take him for yourself? Amen. Will you reach out? Lay hold of God today. Is that you? You'd put your hand up. Unsaved. Maybe you're backslidden. You need Jesus Christ. Put your hand up and we'll pray before you leave today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I want to change the call. I want to speak to, to all of you here, believers. If you love Jesus, a good work has been begun in your life. God has done something wonderful in you. And you're flowing with him. The fact that you're here today, he makes a statement. He says, I, I, 
I want to do something for God. I want to live for God. You've come to hear His Word. And He wants to encourage you and help put some steel in your spirit, in your resolve. There's a weariness that can come upon us. The tiredness of our flesh and our spirit and circumstances can wear us out. The, the call for us is to be determined, to be those that would cling to Him. Never letting go. I, I'm not letting go until you bless me. And for us, that's about entering heaven. Amen. I'll not let you go until you begin to see His kingdom come in our lives personally and in our marriages and in our families. I will not let you go until you bless me. Is that the resolve of your heart? God wants to help you today. God wants to help you. And here today at this altar, you can come. You can come and you can make that bold declaration of faith and say, Lord, I'm clinging on to you. No matter what comes in my life, I'm dedicating the rest of my days, the rest of my years to you. No questions asked. I'm living for you, for your will, your purposes. You have me. I'm not letting go. Amen. And you want to make that bold declaration to him. I want you to come to this altar space and I want you to, to cry out to him, begin to pray and say, Lord, take my life and help me. Amen. Hallelujah. Come, find a place to pray today. Amen. As you do that, consider Ruth also made a commitment to cling to one of the children of God. Her name was Naomi. God's will is worked out with connecting yourself to the right people. Ruth connected herself to the right people. As you pray, you connect yourself to God and His will. You pray, say, God, I know the people you've connected me to and I'm clinging to them too. I'm not going to let go of the people of faith. Hallelujah. No matter what comes at me, no matter what situation, I will cling to you with the people of God. Amen. Pray today. Behind me, your loving kindness. 
That is his attitude towards you and me. So there's no, there's never going to be issues on his side and his heart towards you and me. And so it, it's us that need to make sure that we have that attitude towards him. I will never leave you nor forsake you. God help me. I know I have failures. I know there's, I'm flawed. I know I have it. But you know what, Lord, you help me. I will never leave you. I'll, I'll never forsake you. I will, I will keep doing all that I can in the, the, the weakness of my human flesh. I will, I will continue to pursue you. I will press on to, for what you have for me. We need that determination. Can you say amen this morning? God has great things for us. And, and it's all linked to us being determined. I'm pressing in. I'm not giving up. I'm pushing through. And as we do that, watch the blessing, the favor of God that comes our way. Appreciate you being here today. And we're going to have another good service here this evening. I encourage you to come. Five for prayer uh, and uh, six o'clock for our service. And, uh, and uh, just a reminder about the impact team. Don't forget to sign up if you can. Uh, be there. That will be a blessing to Pastor uh, uh, Shaka there, Pastor Adrian. As we close, I'm going to ask Justin if he could pray, send us with God's blessing today.